walking to work earlier this month, Moses Brundy would end up badly beaten. Making his way through Ballard, he was attacked, kicked while unconscious, and according to court documents, he did not even remember what had happened, bleeding from his mouth, nose, and ears. He could barely talk, and he said, I didn't do anything. I was almost at work, and I got attacked like this. That's his mother, Oksana Peters, down in Texas. Not wanting to believe what she had just heard, she asked him to send her a picture. And when he did, I, I just couldn't stop crying. I couldn't believe that somebody could hurt somebody else like this for no, no reason whatsoever. Between July 31st and August 2nd, the King County Prosecutor's Office reports six random assaults, and charges have now been filed in all of them. In Pioneer Square, a man was arrested for pointing a painted BB gun at people, threatening to kill them. There were also attacks at a bus stop along 3rd and at an apartment building where a man barged inside. The prosecutor's office vowing to pursue each one. You know, we don't want people to think that that we get assault reports and then turn a blind eye to them. They, these are very serious cases. The park will be closed at 930. Police patrols will be a regular part of the scene at Alki Beach, with a team of three officers now dedicated to the area most nights between 8 and 11 p.m. Listen, I've always believed that a presence down here has been a good idea just to make sure that nothing ignites, nothing gets going. The added staffing follows recent neighborhood concerns that crime in the area is getting worse, including a drive-by double shooting early Sunday morning. It's a great idea for them to uh, add extra security because of the recent shootings. Como News reviewed the police department's website and found a 30% increase in crimes against people and a 50% jump in property crimes compared to the same time last year. However, the captain of the precinct says crime is actually down 13% across all categories, though there has been a slight uptick in the past month. I don't know. I think the beach is doing fine, personally. Regardless, police are glad to have some help from the Parks Department. It seems like having the Parks Department pay for it is a, a good way to fund it. Yeah, we are seeking more clarity on the actual crime stats for this area. Meanwhile, the added patrols as this unit leaves, they run Thursday through Sunday up until September 27th. Back to you. Joel, thank you. There's new concern about America's death toll from coronavirus. The latest forecast from the University of Washington's Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation shows 295,000 deaths by December 1st here in America. That's 65,000 more than the previous forecast, which went up to November 1st. For Washington State, the IHME predicts more than 5,000 deaths by December 1st, more than double its previous forecast. Come with Tammy Mutasa here now to explain the newest numbers and the warning about another statewide shutdown. Tammy? Preston, the new numbers from IHME are chilling. Researchers say we can't afford the COVID-19 fatigue and too much is at stake as this pandemic plays out in the fall. If we do our part, we can delay the lockdown and we can save lives. A grim picture in the fall as the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation says our state may need to lock down again in October. The IHME projects thousands of Washingtonians will die from coronavirus by December 1st. Time will work against us from now on. I spoke one-on-one on one with IHME's Dr. Ali Makdad about why there is a drastic change in death projections. So two factors. One is we have seen increased infections in parts of our state. Uh, and then the second part is we're heading into this high peak of seasonality when COVID-19 will be more likely to transmit from one person to another person in fall and winter. Researchers say the winter season and schools opening factor in their forecast and people's behavior. They say if 95% of people in our country wear masks, the death toll would drop and more than 66,000 lives would be saved. 66,000. When things get bad in their community, individuals are more likely to wear a mask, more likely to be cautious, and that, that helps put the brakes on transmission. Researchers say heading into winter is not the time to let our guard down with this pandemic. You have to do your part in order to save somebody else in order to open your economy. So unless all of us do it, we're not going to reach that point that we prevent lockdown. One thing researchers say is still up in the air is the full effect of schools opening. So as researchers learn more, they'll be able to tune those models. Thank you, Tammy. Yes. 
Well, Seattle City Council's proposal to do away with the navigation team has raised a lot of concerns in many different neighborhoods that we checked in with, including South Lake Union. This is Denny Park. Both residents and businesses we talked to are worried. It just makes me a little sad to see all these people camping out here. Myson Witherspoon has seen the homeless problem grow here at Denny Park. He lives just around the corner from it. More camps seem to be popping up all over the city of Seattle. During the COVID-19 pandemic, sweeps of illegal homeless camps have been suspended. But now another problem could be on the horizon. A proposal to axe the Seattle Police Department navigation team. That's the team of 10 officers and outreach workers trained to work with homeless. Help them get off the streets before removing their tents. I think that's terrible because now they're going to have, now we're going to have to think of a whole new way to deal with this homeless problem that's only going to keep growing as time goes on. That proposal to dismantle the navigation team comes as a big surprise to a lot of people. Very surprising. I think that that should be one of the things that shouldn't get cut. I think there are a lot of other things that we should have priorities on. Another neighborhood we visited today, the Chinatown International District. That's where Paul Nguyen works. He's been managing the parking lot on Jackson Street underneath I-5 for the past 18 years. It's getting problem, getting worse now. Nguyen says the homeless tents started outside his enclosed parking lot. Campers are now taking over a section of his lot, and there's nothing he can do about it. When he heard the navigation team could be on the chopping block. That's bad. No, we need that. Nguyen says the homeless problem is about to get worse. It's going to be worse. It's going to be terrible. We need the police.